Hello everyone, welcome to the Platforms Open Call webinar for this year. My name is Kerry Levitt, I'm the Platforms Program Manager for the Australian Research Data Commons. Uh, also on the line we have Dr Andrew Trelaw, the Director of Platforms and Software. Sorry, my, screen, my slides have just disappeared yet again. Um, so first of all, I'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country. Um, I live and work on Ghana land and I acknowledge the deep connection that the Ghana people have with their land and I uh, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, so this webinar Sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble with my slides today. Uh, okay. this I think, I think the, the problem was me because I stopped sharing my webcam and that's what made your screen go strange. Okay, all right, I'll try and share again. Just takes a little while for this to come up, sorry. Okay, that looks better. Okay. So this webinar will present an overview of the platform's open call for this year. Um, we will have time for questions at the end, so please enter all of your questions into the question box. Um, and I'll, if I can see them come up, I'll try and answer them as I go, but otherwise we'll answer them all at the end. This is, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch the recording uh, once we post it up. Okay, so let's get started. Great. So, a platform is, um, our, we're defining a platform as a set of shared online, uh, sorry, a set of online services that allows researchers to do something with data. So that could be find, collect, maybe in the field or from uh, capture from an instrument, um, analyze data, visualize that, um, present it, and share it in a way that is fair or fair ready. So the objectives for the platforms program, we're looking for platforms that are transformative. So what we mean by that is we're looking for um, platforms that will change the way research is conducted, that will um, enable the answering of quest research questions that haven't been able to be answered before or ch um, dramatically improve the way research is done. Or uh, increase, accelerate research, or increase the speed at which it can be conducted. We're, we're looking for a sustainable set of platforms um, that will be part of the Commons, the Australian Research Data Commons. Um, we're, we're looking to have more researchers have access to platforms, so that's um, more researchers in more disciplines. And we're also looking to bring together the community of developers um, that develop these platforms. So um, to, it's a community of practice to help the developers uh, support each other in developing and, and um, sharing best practices. Um, yeah, so that's part of our program. Hopefully we can get to the next slide. Okay, so uh, in terms of the open call, the process, we're looking to be uh, transparent. We're very much looking to reward collaboration. So these are national scale platforms, national scale investments um, that will only work with broad collaboration. So um, the process is set up to, to increase that collaboration through the EOI process, and I'll talk about that soon. Um, and we're also looking for new entrants um, into the e-research sector. So that will help increase the, um, the diversity of platforms. Sorry, I'm just having trouble advancing my slides today. All right, so uh, the scope of the program, I'll just talk about what's out of scope to start with. We, um, we're not looking for the development of new platforms from scratch. So mm -hmm. that's a completely new idea with a bespoke development. That is out of scope and so is purchasing commercial off-the-shelf solutions. So what we are looking for is 
um, projects that look to adopt an existing platform that, for instance, something that is used successfully by a community overseas um, and the Australian community wants to adopt that same platform here. Um, it could be adaptation of existing platform that works for one discipline or research area um, and it's being adapted for a different research area um, and the work there would be um, associating uh, new data sources and new tools into that platform technology. Um, we, uh, in scope, is also support for the adoption of a relatively generic platform solution that could be the, one of the OSF, the OSF platform or Hub Zero, something like that. Um, existing platforms, um, if you're looking to re-engineer them to make them more sustainable, that is in scope. So um, looking to adopt shared services such as authentication services um, or moving to a microservices architecture. And as well as um, instant, instant <laughs> operation of specific services or microservices that can be integrated into other platforms. Okay, so the, pl the projects can be up to two and a half years um, in duration, so between one and two and a half years, um, though they'll need to end by June 2023. Um, the uh, proposals can ask for up to $1 million of ARDC investment per project. So for a two and a half year project, that works out to 400,000 per year. So $400,000 for the first two calendar years and then 200,000 for the last six months. Um, unlike last year's open call, a one-to-one -one cash co-investment from partners isn't mandatory, but, um, and that's in response to um, the COVID-19 situation with um, cash flow issues um, with a lot of partners, but the level of co-investment is still part of the proposal evaluation. Um, we obviously need a legal, legal entity as the lead to sign the contract um, and just a heads up that, that we're not planning on having an open call in uh, next year for platforms. So last year um, there was a possibility that we might have three platforms open calls, but at this stage we're just planning this is the last one. So there are three phases. Um, we're just about to enter the EOI phase. The EOI will open on the 7th of July. Um, this is the collaborative phase. This is where we are looking for people to put up their, their ideas um, as EOIs. They, the EOIs will be published on our website um, after the 24th of July. And this is where people will be able to see what each other is doing and come together into um, a larger scale proposal. So we are taking a, um, an active facilitation role in, in this, um, this collaboration phase. So from the time that the first EOI is submitted until the 31st of August, so that's the day before the RFP opens, um, ARDC will be facilitating conversations between um, the EOI proposers. Um, and this can also be um, initiated by the applicants themselves. So if there's another EOI that um, you see that is relevant to yours, um, you're very welcome to contact them and start those conversations yourself. Um, as well as other people who haven't submitted EOIs um, could contact the EOI leads um, as potential collaborators. So the RFP phase will open on the 1st of September, running um, through to the 18th. This is a competitive phase. Um, it requires much more detailed documentation. Um, and once that opens, ARDC can no longer um, assist with the development proposals. Um, you can still ask questions um, about the documentation itself, but um, we, we can't give you detailed, specific feedback on your proposal. So, what are we looking for when we talk about coordinating between EOIs? We'll be looking out for um, relevant groupings of disciplines and research areas. Um, it might be similar data types, similar data challenges, even from across disciplines. Uh, similar instruments that the data is coming off, similar software tools or platform technologies. 
Um, and also opportunities for use of shared services such as authentication or container orchestration services. Okay, so for those of you who um, put in an application last year, I wanted to let you know that the selection criteria and questions have changed um, and please do see the RFP documentation if you haven't already. The EOI and proposal forms are there um, in the appendices. So the reason we've done this is we wanted the selection criteria to really clo more closely align with our objectives for the program and we, we're we hoping that the, um, that the proposal template is um, gives people uh, an opportunity to more clearly describe what their project and um, platform is about. Um, so please um, do give me feedback on, on those as you go through them. Um, one of the big changes for the proposal is that we're asking all collaborators that are listed on the proposal to uh, fill out a form to confirm um, that they are indeed a collaborator. Um, as well as for them to give us um, their detailed information. So that form will be automatically emailed out to them um, once the proposal is submitted. And we're gonna ask them for their contact information, um, as well as what role that they play in the project. And if they are what's, what a key user, so that's um, a user that is involved in the development or enhancement of the platform, that, um, that the platform is being developed or enhanced for them, and for their needs. Uh, it will ask them for what FOR codes um, their research comes under and for up to three, up to three really brief case studies of what the platform will be able to do for them. So we wanted to give the users an opportunity to, to say um, exactly what they will be able to do with the platform to make it really clear um, what the platform is aiming at. Okay, so um, here we have the timing. As I said, EOI runs from the 7th to the 24th of July, and we will start um, having conversations with people as soon as the first EOI is submitted. So please submit them as soon as possible. It gives you a lot longer before the RFP um, opens to really craft a great proposal. Um, the closing date for questions is a one week before the RFP ends. Um, the questions can be submitted on uh, to, to me um, or on our website on the platforms page there is an ask a question form and all of those answers will be put into the frequently asked questions um, that is also available for the platforms page um, as will all the answers from today so oops. okay so the platforms page you can get to ardc.edu dot au forward slash platforms and then follow the links to the open call 2020. So that's it for the overview. Um, I'd like now to give you an opportunity to ask questions. So I'm going to try and stop sharing my screen so I can see the questions. So Andrew, do we have any questions come through yet? So we've had one question. Uh, let me let me really live dangerously and share my webcam. Uh, we've had one question about co-investment, whether co-investment needed to be even across uh, all of the partners. And I said no. We were just looking at total co-investment um, lined up with our DC investment. Yes. Um, now, can you see the questions now, Kerry? No, I cannot. So that's very weird. Uh, let me make you an organiser as well and see if that solves the problem. Um, so the next question was whether... Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, do you want to sure. tackle those? Yep. Sure. I'll just um, open them up so I can read them. They're tiny on my screen right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sh the first question, uh, should the proposal describe what users will use it for or should that be reserved for the user response emails? Um, yes, no, please, if you have a look at the, um, the proposal form, we do ask for um, 
we do ask for um, how the platform will be transformative and or accelerate research and that um, is those responses are provided in the form of case studies as well so yes please do let us know what the platform will be used for um, next question can you outline what what the features of a typical successful proposal from last year so the question so the successful proposals were those that um, generally showed the highest transformation potential um, in the types of research or or acceleration of research uh, they were those that had broad collaboration including from the user communities so they the um, proposal participants were representative of the user communities. Um, they had strong governance um, structures planned um, and um, strong focus on uh, sustainability of the platform. So um, strong plans for or, or already enacted plans for sustainability. Um, Andrew, can you think of I can actually send out, we did send um, to last year's um, applicants, I did send out um, an overview of what makes a successful proposal, so I'm happy to share that. Yeah, and I think that that's probably the best uh, the best approach so that everyone gets a consistent message, um, mm. because then that goes to the, the people who were unsuccessful last time, as well as the, mm. the people who are uh, applying this time. Yeah, um, yeah I might put that through the FAQs. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Great. Um, can we have more clarification about what's meant by a new excluded project? So is that, um, I'm guessing that is a, um, a brand new platform from scratch? Yeah, think, I'm not quite uh, sure. So, um, so Kevin, if you could perhaps expand on that, but if you mean, um, so when I said out of scope is a, a brand new platform from scratch, it's more, it's the building from scratch. So, so some of the, um, a lot, most of the proposals, there will be an existing tool or um, university scale platform that is, that people are looking to expand to a, um, to a national scale. Um, what we what we don't want is the actual platform technology itself to be built from scratch. So we're looking for taking existing components or existing um, platform technologies and reusing those for your research area. Yeah, uh, and in yeah. particular, if I can if I can just add to that, in particular, what we're looking to discourage here is what I sometimes call whiteboard proposals where people say, look, everything that's out there is terrible. Here's my grand vision documented on this whiteboard. I'm going to build it from scratch. We're not interested in that. Um, so is there any advice on the size of the data data set or platform that would be supported? So first of all, um, oh, it's, in terms of the financial um, investment, um, I think we're suggesting that the Smallest per year amount would be fifty thousand investment from ARDC, um, and that would be a very small project, possibly around um, developing a component um, or a microservice, um, or set of microservices for platforms rather than the entire platform itself. Um, and in terms of the data set, um, this this is specifically a platform call. So if you are looking at collecting new data or compiling data sets, please do have a look at our Australian data, um, or at our national data assets prog uh, programs, um, particularly the Australian data partnerships. And they are all available on our website. Uh, comment on, can we comment on the weight of co-investment in evaluating the proposal? Uh, it's one of many criteria that we'll be looking at. Um, and last year we weighted most of the criteria equally. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not expecting that to be different this year, although we haven't yet made a final decision about weighting. 
but co-investment is is certainly not weighted out of proportion to to other things it's one of the criteria we use yeah and i would also i should have mentioned that um in early july we'll be releasing um, an assessment guidance for the proposal and sorry about the background noise <laughs> that was my dog um yeah so we um, i'll be releasing um guidance for um for the collection criteria so that should help yeah, and just to, to clarify what Kerry meant by that, so uh, we've, we're going to publish the criteria that we'll be using to assess the proposals, but also the guidance to the assessment panel about how to determine whether something um, responds really well to a particular criterion or poorly to a criterion or in between, so that you have a sense not just of what we care about, but how we'll determine uh, your response to those criteria. Thanks, Andrew. Um, the next question is, um, can we talk about what's included in the budget? So um, again, I will be putting out the templates for the budget and the milestones soon as well. Um, but it's, um, it's not, um, I can say what's not um, in scope is purchase of hardware. But um, labour is fine, and what else? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of outlandish things that people might request. Um, I mean, our expectation would be that uh, things like internet access and office space and and that kind of stuff would be done as in kind through the the partner institutions um we've had questions in the past about whether travel would be acceptable as um, something to be included in the budget uh yes to a reasonable amount i think is the answer there so if you're of course this assumes that we're going to be allowed to travel again at some point in the future um but you know things like bringing people together for a user requirements workshop would be fine um funding a two-month world tour to visit cool projects that you'd like to catch up with, probably less so. Um, but those kinds of things would be discussions that would be happening with the steering committee and the governance for the project anyway. So I, I suspect the more extreme things wouldn't be likely to be approved by the, the, the project governance. Yeah, so things like community building and training um, are definitely in scope. Um, as so, um, and so salaries associated with creating and installing infrastructure um, and potentially um, consortium membership costs. Um, so when looking at um, national or international scale research facilities, the use of those. Um, less in scope is, well not in scope really, is um, compiling of um, data collections. Um, so yeah, the focus of the project has to be on the platform. Sorry, just turned my video off. Um, so another question about um, the one-to-one -one co investment um, are projects with co investment more competitive, hence regarded higher? Yes, yes, that's correct. But again, uh, it's just one of a number of criteria. Uh, concerning key users, do you look for a large number here, almost as a kind of user survey? Uh, Yes, we are asking for numbers of um, users um, and potential users um, to get an idea of the user base. Um, it's, it's not a selection criteria as such. We're more concerned with um, the users being involved in the, in the proposal and in the project. Um, so, but user surveys, if you have that information, is really, really helpful for us. Um, as well as helpful for you. But to, um, to pick an extreme example, if we had two platforms proposals that in all other respects were equally desirable, one was going to benefit five people and one was going to benefit 500, 
uh, we would probably be more interested in the one that was going to benefit 500 because we're yeah. interested in maximizing the impact of the, the taxpayer investment in this area. Thanks. Um, oh, okay. So um, we mentioned new entrants. So can we elaborate on what we mean by that? Does it mean researchers who have never used ARDC resources or new challenges being solved? So I would say um, new um, people that yet haven't um, received ARDC or our previous um, incarnations funding um, to build a platform. So for instance, last year, um, or we, we haven't precluded any of the existing virtual laboratories that were funded under the NECTA program um, from applying for the platform's funding for, um, for enhancements or um, expansions. Um, but we want to make sure that new entrants, that the people that haven't previously received that funding um, and having, have, don't already have a national scale platform can um, be involved in, and receive this investment. Yeah. And uh, just to, to nuance that slightly, um, when Kerry said funding, she meant investment. Uh, where where right. ARDC does not see itself as a funder here, we see ourselves as partners with the community in investing. And so, if we look at the program, the projects that we funded last year, for most of those, ARDC was the minority yeah. investor. There was more co investment from other, um, other partners than, uh, than through us. Okay, thank you. Um, will ARDC invite successful EOI proponents to make a full proposal, or can anyone who submitted an EOI submit a full proposal? It's somewhere in between that. It's um, we'll be looking at the proposals mainly from a view of facilitating the, the collaboration conversations. But if someone puts something forward that is very much out of scope um, and that that we don't think could be combined with another um, EOI or or adjusted to become in scope, we will let them know so that we'll, we'll give them that feedback so that they don't waste their time in putting together a full proposal. But it's not, um, the EOI process isn't intended to be a gatekeeper to the proposal. Do you, just, do you think that covers it, Andrew? Uh, yeah, but I would add that we do not want people coming a lot. Well, we will be looking, when we get to the request for proposal phase, if you haven't submitted an EOI, you would not be able to submit a request for proposal. Yeah. We don't want people hoarding their ideas and then coming along very late in the process mm -hmm. and saying, surprise, this is what I want to do. Uh, we really want to yeah. try and uh, make this as collaborative a process as possible, potentially collaborative a process as possible while people are working up their proposals. Yeah, absolutely. So the next question is, can educational resources be included on the platform? Um, if I understand correctly, I think the answer is yes. Um, if, if you mean, um, say, data sets or tools for educational purposes, so to be used by students, um, yes, but the primary use of the platform must be for research. So the primary users of the platform would be Australian researchers, I think is how I'd yep. put that. Uh, and so I read that as can you have educational resources associated with the platform, that is, um, can you develop um, training materials, for instance, uh, on use of the platform? Uh, I'm pretty sure Kerry's interpretation is the correct one. But uh, if, you're, if the question was, can you have educational resources associated with using the platform? Absolutely. The Eco Commons, which is one of the data enhanced virtual labs that we funded, had a very active um, training element to it, developed some fantastic resources there. Uh, and so that is absolutely in scope. Uh, and EcoCommons again uh, got used by um, students across a range of, of levels down to I think undergraduate in some cases. Um, and that's fine. I mean that kind of serendipitous use is is certainly um, something we'd welcome. But as Kerry says, we're primarily targeting research impact. Mm. Thanks. Uh, so, a good question. How are the conversations between different potential collaborators facilit facilitated by ARDC? So, um, I think in the first case, we will be going through the EOIs and looking for um, 
potential synergies and um, approaching those EOI um, leads and um, suggesting conversations between them, um, which we will be involved in. Um, and um, helping um, helping them find out exactly um, what they're looking for and what those opportunities are. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, and my answer was going to be it depends. Um, <laughs> everything that Kerry said uh, and uh, looking to to help. I mean, if if it if it would be useful to have ARDC staff facilitating a discussion, uh, then we're happy to do that. And in fact, the National Data Assets Program, um, we are quite actively involved in helping shape some of those proposals. If it would be useful for us to do that this time around, we're happy to do that as well. Um, but as Kerry says, we'll be deliberately looking for opportunities to bring groups together uh, that look like they're tackling similar problems or using similar technology sets. Great. Uh, so next question, can you tell us more about the case study? So, um, I, so the use cases that we're asking the um, collaborators, the key users to provide are really simple, uh, maximum of a thousand characters, it's about 130 words. Um, on what the, what they will use the platform for. So I, I have this type of data, I have this problem, this platform will enable me to do this. Um, really, really simple and, and this is a change or this is an improvement because. Um, so that's really simple. Um, the, um, in terms of the, in the actual proposal itself, um, when we're asking for to provide evidence of the transformational potential of the platform, um, we're looking for. I think we've got um, up to five longer case study uh, use cases, and it's it's again it's a similar it's the same format, but just expanded about what the platform will actually be able to achieve for the for the users. Um, I'm happy to have discussions um, have conversations with people about that. Um, as you go to, as you look into that more closely. Is there anything else you can add to that? No. Okay. So um, I'm pulling faces because I'm looking at the next question. Ah. Oh, yeah. How is, an inter how is international collaboration evaluated in comparison to a national one? So I think part of the answer to that is that the focus for the use, the use of the platform has to be focused on Australian researchers. So international researchers, industry, government, policy use is all really good, um, but the focus has to be on Australia and Australian researchers. Um, but international collaborations are really necessary in so many fields. So I, um, and being in, in terms of agreed community formats and community standards, having that agreed internationally is incredibly important for interoperability. So I don't think I'd preference one over the other, um, but, but this is the Australian Research Data Commons. Yeah, and I, all of that, um, I would add, first of all, we probably, Kerry, we probably need to think about the guidance we provide around that to the assessment panel. So that's a, that's a good question to ask at this point. Uh, the other comment that I'd make is that international collaboration could mean two things. It could mean facilitating collaboration between Australian researchers and international researchers. Um, and as Kerry says, that's absolutely wonderful and the kind of thing we want to encourage. But it might also mean collaboration with international platform developers. So one of the Data Enhanced Virtual Laboratories and indeed one of the Platforms Open Core One projects that we funded was using a workflow technology called Galaxy, which is developed overseas. And so there's Australian investment that is collaborating with international investment around the development, development of that technology. So uh, I think we're interested both in supporting researcher collaboration, but building on infrastructure collaboration. And from a sustainability point of view, 
working with international developers around a shared code base is more likely to lead to a sustainable income than an Australian group doing it on its own. Yes. Um, I've just looked at how many questions we have. We are going to be need to be more concise in our answers. <laughs> Noted. Um, okay. So will projects be viewed positively that add to the capability or potential breadth of uptake of last year's funded platforms? Um, yeah, that one's tricky because the the currently funded projects are not eligible to apply for this open call. But if you were using tools, so I think the answer might be no to that one. Well, it depends if they're building on. So, for instance, yeah. if uh, they're building something that takes one of the existing platforms and repurposes it for a new community, that I think would yeah. be fine. That's fine, but if it's for the existing community, um, unless unless it's unless it's something that allows that platform to go to a whole new community still within the the same system, I, I think we might need to talk about that one more closely because yeah. it depends. I'm going to use Andrew's. It depends. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's something we'd want to discuss using during the EOI we'll, phase. Yeah, and we'll try and clarify that um, as well. So, uh, for everybody, um, can you talk more about your expectations for sustainability? Yep. So, uh, if I can pick off this and the comment that Peter Sefton uh, has also made uh, in the in the chat. Um, we, the ARDC, do not want to be um, investing forever in the ongoing maintenance of these particular solutions. We see our role as to um, kickstart things that will then uh, demonstrate that they have value to a particular community and that community will take on and support them. So that's why we're looking at sustainability in the um, in one, as one of the criteria. Uh, we're going to provide more guidance this year than we did last year around what we're specifically looking for in sustainability. Uh, but what we want is, well, what we don't want is we don't want to invest in things that fall over at the end of the, the project period. So that's why we're pushing sustainability and co-investment. But we will provide more clarity about that uh, in the guidance. Sorry, I'm just answering one of these questions. Okay, so the next one is, could the scheme support pilot work at a smaller scale that leads towards larger national level collaboration? Um, it could, but you would need to think about where that, um, where that larger national level collaboration was going to happen. Because as Kerry said, it's unlikely that we'll have a platforms open call three. So if you are, say, proposing to do something small for the next two and a half years, um, you would need to have a, a good answer as to where it would go beyond that. Yeah. Um, so next question, are existing resources like Ausley, um, Ausstage, et cetera, all considered to be platforms already? If so, are they eligible for support? Yes and yes. So um, yes, that those, those that you've listed are platforms. Yes, they are eligible. Um, Although and, when, when, when you say support, yes, sorry, oh, I was going to say, yeah, um, assuming that what you're looking, that they're eligible for this program in terms of um, extending their, um, ex enhancing, extending, um, going to new communities, connecting to new data sources, new tools. So yeah. not yeah. maintenance, not maintenance, and operation support. Exactly. Uh, so can we confirm that project partners don't need to, yes, project partners do not need to come from the list of eligible organisations with the exception of the lead organisation. That is correct. So only the lead um, for the contract signing needs to be one of those eligible organisations um, listed in the documentation. Um, for collaborations, will it be possible to draw upon or work with recipients of previous platform call funding? Yes, I think we've answered that. It is well, that's yeah, so two comments. First, not only is it possible, we would encourage it. And secondly, we have a webinar next week where the platforms open call one uh, projects will be explaining what they're doing and why, so that you can uh, attend and see collaboration opportunities. 
And if you don't know about yes. that webinar, please let us know. Uh, um, so if a previous proposal had been successful, Chris? So I'm interpreting, yeah, so I'm interpreting that. So the question is, if a platform's open call had been successful, then building from that would be appropriate question mark. If it's if it's the group that got investment last year saying, look, thanks for the million and a half we got last year, we'd now like to come back for another million. Um, we would probably be looking at that less enthusiastically if it was building on work that got started last year from a different group, then yes, that would be appropriate. Uh, are there any requirements regarding OPEX versus CAPEX mix-in programs? More specifically, is data curation an eligible activity? So what we said last year is that there is always going to be need, need well, often need, will need to be some data wrangling um, work done in the platforms, but it has to be a really small proportion. So, um, so if you're, so yes, a little bit of that work or, or setting up the, the standards for that work, um, so, you know, maybe 10% of the entire platform effort, um, I think is what we said last year. Um, but if you're looking at a, a lot of that type of work and that's your main focus, then please have a look at the Australian Data Partnerships open call. It, it opens at the same time as the platforms um, and you can apply for both, but they will be, um, they will be evaluated separately um, so you can't have interdependent proposals. You can have two independent proposals that would make sense if one or the other was funded. But um, so yeah, so but talk to us about that if you've got um, if you've got something that's a real mix between them. Um, what if existing technologies provided are obsolete? Will that be taken into account from a technical point of view? Can I do that one? Sorry. Um, so there's a couple of ways you could interpret that. Um, one would be a proposal that said, here's an existing technology stack, it's five years out of date, and we want to rework it to enable us to do these cool new things. Uh, that's absolutely something we would be happy to discuss with you at the EOI stage. Um, uh, and in fact, one of the proposals we invested in last year was essentially that argument. It was a re-engineering to enable wider deployment to a, to a greater group. Um, if the question means, are we going to be looking at a proposal and saying, oh, you're using relational databases, that's so last paradigm. Uh, no, we will not be doing that. Um. What can be included and not included in the budget? Can salaries be included? Yes, absolutely. Salaries are a very large part of the platform's development. Yep. Um, yes. Okay, so would it be possible to get specific feedback on the specific pro unsuccessful proposal from last year to help ensure that the emissions in the last proposal aren't repeated? Um, unfortunately, we're saying no to this one because we had such a large number of proposals. We can't give specific feedback to every proposal. What we can do is, if your idea is unchanged from last year, we can use that idea as a basis for the discussion um, and with a view to how it fits in with this open call. Um, so that's that's what I've been doing. I've had a few people approach me and say, look, we've still got the same idea. We've got a couple of new collaborators. We've got, you know, these little bits of change. What do you think? And we can use that as the, as the starting base. So please do, um, please do give me a call and we can set up a meeting. Uh, both cash and in-kind invest, co-investments are counted. Yes, they are. Um, with the caveat that um, in-kind investments, so it's, um, people's time, um, needs or to be intellectual property or yeah 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 so um, so in terms of if, if it was someone's time though um, it needs to be at least 0.2 so it's a, at least a day a week um, of of their of their time um, um, we don't we don't want any less than that at all 
um, to be counted. But last one. year, when we were when we were saying we had a one to one mandatory co investment, we were only looking at cash. No, no, we we did actually have it was it was the same. It was in kind up to it was 0.25 percent of someone's time. It was a quarter of their time last year was allowed in the end. Uh, it was allowed, but we weren't counting that um, against the co-investment number to determine whether it was one-to-one -one when we had the one-to-one -one threshold. We were. Kerry we'll and I could need to have a conversation about this. Yep. Um, yes, it is counted. <laughs> um, okay, this is an interesting. Is is local participation or contribution to a new international platform currently in development within scope? I think I would say yes. Yeah, I would say it depends. Um, I think it depends on how far into development that platform is and what it's using yeah. to yeah. what, you know, probably the same criteria as we've got for the local. Is it completely built new from scratch? Mm. Talk to us. Um, because that one seems to be quite, that's one, that's quite specific, that one. Uh, cloud hosting costs, question mark. So I'm assuming this question means if I want to host my platform on Amazon rather than Nectar, um, could those costs be included in the budget? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, we'd prefer people to use the infrastructure that we have in place, but if there are compelling reasons not to, um, then uh, yes, that would be that would be possible. And in fact, one of the projects we invested in last year did do that, so it's clearly acceptable. And, and I should point out that um, the use of ARDC resources, such as the Nectar Cloud, are um, are are given are guaranteed for um, yeah. successful proposals. So um, so yeah, you, if you use our services, that um, you get automatic allocation. Um, can in-kind investment include provision of use of existing hardware setups to support development? Yes, Andrew? Mm -hmm. Can we take that one on notice? Um, uh, so thanks for the question. We'll get back to that, that individual. Okay. Uh, another one about paying for cloud services? Yes. Yep. Uh, um, Okay, but staff time to make a data collection platform ready is in scope of budget. So yes, if it's the data collection platform, yes, but the actual okay, so I'm, I'm to, data, yeah. no. Only yeah, so bit. I'm interpreting that as it's the wrangling. It's making a data oh, collection sorry, yeah. space data platform, collection ready. platform ready. Yes, um, only a small amount. Yeah. This is this absolutely focuses on platforms. We're happy to have a chat about um, how you could go about applying for the two different um, open calls. Um, so yeah, yes. please yeah. please get in touch. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you, this is a yeah this is a big question. How do you expect the current contraction in university funding? envelopes due to COVID-19 and student downturns to impact on the level of co-investment we are likely to obtain for projects and how we ensure equity between universities that have more or less exposure to this instability in budgets. I think given that these are national scale projects, I would say that that risk is spread across multiple institutions when we're talking about universities. So I would say that's the way I would um, approach it. Um, the um, because the the as we said before the co investment from partners does not need to be equal equally spread across the partners we're just looking at it on a project level um, and to answer the first part the we do expect um, we do expect the the student number um, downturn to have an impact on co-investment availability, which is why we have removed the mandatory one-to-one -one because uh, um, requirement, because we do want to continue infrastructure development. We don't want that to be paused because of COVID-19. 
And to answer the equity question, I think we have to accept that there's always going to be different levels of appetite for co-investment across the sector. Um, that was true last year pre-COVID. It'll be true now. It'll be true next year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is looking to transition to a more sustainable version of a set of existing solutions in scope? Uh, yes. Um, it probably depends on why something is more sustainable, but yes, that's I think I've answered that. That that's what we've um, we we did fund a project that was was doing that last year. Um, Give some guidance on how we cost in overseas partners' contributions. How involved should they be with setting up an Australian node of an international network be okay? Uh, yes, uh, assuming it's a, a, when you say network, you mean um, platform. Um, yes. Um, in terms of cost, yeah, in terms of what exchange rates and I should have said earlier with the budget that we um, that on costs are allowed, so salaries and on costs, um, and just use the um, the rate that your university uses or the ARC rate. I think it's thirty percent for ARC. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure about how we go about costing overseas contributions. So we might have to have a take that one on notice. Um, yeah. Maybe get in contact with please, Melanie. Um, is there value added to the application if capacity for international co uh, collaborations or there's existing ones? Um, yes, as we responded earlier, that we see there's there's benefit in um, uh, in making it easier for Australian researchers to collaborate with international colleagues. Um, Okay, can you please elaborate on the intended user community is represented in the project selection criteria? Um, does that mean that the primary intended end users need to be project partners? Um, that is preferable um, in that, um, because what we're, what we're trying to avoid is technology push. So we're, we're trying to avoid um, where, you know, we've, we're building something that's a great idea that's gonna make researchers' lives easier and improve research, but we don't actually include those researchers in in the in the process. So that uh, until you get down to user testing or perhaps some a few workshops to user requirements, what we're looking for is those users to have input right from the start. So um, that can be through being um, you could have some key users on the steering committee, or um, technical advisory board, or scientific advisory board. Um, you could have already run uh, consultations um, to, to um, get users involved right from the start, or you could be planning to do those at the start. So that's that's what we mean by involved. So yeah, it, I think um, I've I've put in um, in the proposal documentation um, exactly how they can be involved. Uh, Researchers, uh, how do we define researchers? Is someone who works at the government to run species distribution model a researcher? If they're doing research, they're researchers. Um, is, is basically, so yes, government, even industry-based researchers. Um, researchers, no, no, they're not just in university academia. Uh, how are assessors selected? Are there representatives from different disciplines? Yes. But and go uh, we are currently, we're currently going through a, um, a process to identify potential assessors and in fact it's likely that we will be issuing a, an open call for people who wish to be assessors. Um, be aware that we recognise that many of the people in this space in Australia will have conflicts of interest and so we need to have a robust um, process for managing such conflicts. Uh, we're also looking to use a range of international assessors, both because they bring an international perspective and because they're less likely to have conflicts of interest. Um, I can't promise when we're going to issue the open call for people who would like to be assessors, um, but I think it's it's highly likely that that's going to be part of the mechanism 
Last year, what we did was we essentially asked people who we knew and who we thought had the right expertise. Um, this year, we're probably going to be doing something a little bit more rigorous. Okay, um, I think we need to get off the line because we have um, another webinar coming up that needs to use this. So I'm just going to quickly answer the last two. Um, when are projects ex expected to realistically start at the latest? How long does There's it take a piece of string. It, yeah, it, it, it depends on how long the university solicitor or the solicitor at the lead institution uh, uh, chooses to take uh, through the evaluating process. Um, I would hope that we would have contracts for most of these things negotiated by end of March. Mind you, that's what we hoped this year and then COVID got in the way, but you know, mm. three months in, six months in at the absolute latest. Um, okay, so the last two questions, is leverage across ARDC investment streams considered favourably? Um, I think we need to take that on, I, I think I need probably more, need more information from you and Nitha, so if you could um, send me an email. Um, if you mean um, applying for different um, different open calls, um, it's not an advantage or a disadvantage. They will be evaluated completely separately. Um, but if you are planning on doing that, please do get in touch with us. Um, and is, is this scheme exempt from indirect research cost recovery? So universities usually charge 35 to 45% overheads. I'm not referring to on cost for salary. Uh, my understanding is yes, because this is not regarded by universities as research funding, it's research infrastructure funding. Okay. Okay, okay. well that is absolutely it for our questions. Thank you so much. Um, please do, um, the, the, this will be recorded, we'll send the recording out. Um, feel free to get in touch with me or Andrew if uh, you have any further questions or um, submit the questions on the Ask a Question form and we will try and get Thank all of these Nice yep, and thank you for your interest. Thank you very much. Bye.